Hello everybody for Voice of Reason. This is Jake Schwartz in a special edition of Voice of Reason. I should point out we're coming to you from Merle Dobbins High School here in North Philadelphia. And we are honoring tonight for the first time in 31 years, as you look over here, the 1985 Merle Dobbins basketball team. And in a few moments from now, co-hosts Tony Paris and Derek Gathers are going to take the podium and introduce the entire 1985 team, those of the members who are still around, those of whom were able to attend tonight in front of a nice capacity type crowd are gonna come here tonight in this auditorium here at Muriel Dobbins and are going to listen to, we're also gonna hear from a couple of guest speakers as well as again the event organizers, Tony Paris and former player Derek Gathers. Now, when you think of the name Derek Gathers, you certainly think of one of the he had a, I think he had a brother on the team, if I remember that is correct, folks. He is, of course, the brother of the late Hank Gathers, who, as you can see before you, is some of the many members that played on this Public League Championship team in 1985. Also, we'll have back one of my favorite guests, Doug Overton, who at the time was a sophomore point guard. Gregory Bo Kimball will be among the guests we'll have. And it's an action-packed night here at Myrtle Dobbins High School for another edition of Voice of Reason. Right, hello, everybody, for another edition of Voice of Reason. This is Jake Schwartz. We're back here at Merrill Dobbins High School, and look who I ran into here at North Philadelphia's Merrill Dobbins, one of my favorite people I've enjoyed speaking with over the years. And I want you to take a look, Mike, if you have a second, at this gentleman right here. Um, wait, it transitions. 31 years later, one of my favorite human beings I have known for many years, Mr. Derek Gathers. Hey. Derek, it's a pleasure to see you again, Absolutely. my friend. Absolutely. And uh, those of you who want to know who this gentleman is, he is, of course, the brother of the late great and the second all-time leading scorer in Dobbins history, the legendary Hank Gathers. And it rested, of course, uh, as a man we've we certainly respect so much, but you had a pretty big part of that 1985 team. Uh, what was one of the best parts about playing in a school like Merle Dobbins? Well, first of all, you know, thank you for, for having me. And um, yeah, the best part about it, man, was the camaraderie, you know, the, the, the family uh, uh, leadership that, that me and my brother brought to the team. You know, um, we grew up with Daryl Gates and we met Bo like back in 80, 1980. And then we did all decided to come over here and play together. And then Doug came uh, shortly after that. But it was always just the competitiveness of playing my brother every single day, me and him. We was, we was only 10 months apart, born in the same year, sure. 1967. So we grew up basically like twins. We graduated 6th, 8th, 12th grade together. And then we went in out to California to college. Yeah, and that's one of the things that uh, I guess that we wanted to talk about because you have a great history here in this, uh, in this city. You started out here at Merle Dobbins. You took that talent out to Loyola Marymount, played alongside Bo Kimball. What was that like back then? Because back then, public league basketball was certainly a lot different than it is today. I mean, you know, I, I actually just got done listening to the speeches that were made on your behalf, as well as by the co-organizers, which we wanted to talk about. You are the co-organizer of this reunion, of the yes. 31st year reunion, which we're definitely happy to be a part of. When we heard some of the numbers, it just seemed like you dominated basketball in Philadelphia. And back then, there, were, there really weren't a lot of public league teams like they have nowadays. Well, I mean, again, back in that era, you're talking about Pooh Richardson, Lionel Simmons, sure. you know, uh, Mike Anderson, he another guy played in the NBA, uh, Paul Snoop Graham, he another guy played in the NBA, Val Davis. You know, we're talking about we got a brand of NBA players that come right from down here in the Philadelphia area. And nowadays, you ain't going to find that much talent in the, in the well, public you, you, league. You have some talent, but you don't have as much like it was. Like it was. Like it was maybe 20-something years, years ago. I, I, I keep this in mind because this transition all the way out to uh, Loyola Marymount, you played for both, I should say, in Philadelphia, the legendary Rich Yankowitz. You then go on to play for another legend. Uh, that's the guru of go, Mr. Uh, Paul Westhead. What was that like playing for well, him? Well, honestly, I didn't play. Hank and Bo played at well, you, But you were a big part. Oh, yeah, I was a part of it. I played alongside him. I went to the practices a lot. As a matter of fact, I was up there staying with Hank up at LMU 
in 87, the summer of 87, and I happened to get recognized by a coach named Rusty at uh, Cal State Northridge University. Sure. That's the school I went to. Uh, he recruited me. They gave me a full ride, and it all started by being up Loyola Marymount with Paul Westhead, Hank, and Bo. So the story goes on and on and on and on about the uh, legendary Hank Gathers and Bo Kimball. I mean, those guys, they broke a lot of records, and their records will never be touched until this day. I, I got to ask, uh, being in the – I would never want to say you were being in the shadows of your brother, but what was it like growing up alongside a guy like the legendary Hank Gathers? What did he, what did he exemplify mm -hmm. in Philadelphia? Well, first of all, he was a silly guy, silly kid. You know, growing up, always cracking jokes, busing. The, the live, he was the lively one of the room. When he came in the room, the room just lit up. The people just crying, laughing, you know, and things of that. So I seen my brother grow from a little boy, silly, nappy head little boy, into a big, strong businessman. And that's how he ended his career at Loyola on March 4th when he passed away. He was a businessman. He was headed to the NBA, but he also was going to do a lot of big things in the business world and coming back to the community and spreading that love all throughout the community. That I, don't was you, I don't know if you know, I'm, I'm a part of the Danny Rump Classic, which we've had Absolutely. for almost the last decade or so plus. Mm -hmm. I've been announcing there for at least the last five, close to six years. I remember actually that was the first time you and I actually ever met. Yes. And it, it really goes back to the days of the passing of your brother because we honor at the Danny Rump Classic those who have been touched by or who have passed from what's called hypertrophy cardiomyopathy, which of course your brother had yes. and we honor. I think that that tournament, in my opinion, goes back even before Danny Rump himself who passed away 10 years ago. Yes. What does that mean for you, for a guy like Mike Morak? To, to, to run, I should say. Yes, yes. Well, the Owens, that's uh, Marcus Owens. That's correct. And, that is correct. And those guys, that's, that's my big brother, Marcus Owens. And, and I think his brother just passed away, not just recently. I did not know. No, mistaken. I did not know yeah, that. Did, I think he did. But, but for, for me to be a part of the Danny Rump and to go and visit and to hang out with those guys and know that his nephew actually passed the same way Hank did, it means a lot to me. You know, so I will always and continue to support the Danny Rump Classic every year they have it. That goes on, I guess, it goes on record, I guess, with saying that uh, Hank gathers your brother is gone, but hey, his spirit, I know, certainly lives on. I know he'd be absolutely happy about this. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was this is a where are they now? So like many people we're going to ask questions about is uh, what people are doing. So I think we'd like to know uh, about uh, what's been going on with you, what you're doing these days, where are you living, and uh, I guess how many times do you do you, are you still living currently in Philadelphia? Yes, I'm, 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 in, I'm in Philadelphia, excuse me. I'm in Philadelphia and also am in Texas as well. I have a home in Texas. So I, I commute from time to time from here in the, from Texas to Philly. I also coach uh, AAU basketball in Texas. I have a team out there called oh, Turn Up Texas. Oh. I have a 14U as well as a 17U that I coach. And I'm also currently getting ready to bring a team, a traveling team here to Philadelphia. Well, to get a team started so that I can – have them both playing each other and traveling around the country playing in the AAU circuit. And so what I'm doing now is also have the Gather Around yeah, Foundation, you have that which foundation, I started, which I wanted to which talk is, about. Which is which is nonprofit. I also have the Hank Gathers, which is for profit. So we're going to be doing two foundations, and they all going to be triggered to help out the community. Message, I guess you could say, for final thoughts: the foundation you have, basketball. All that and your message, by the way, to what these kids can do nowadays who are in the public league, the Catholic and all the other leagues, hmm. how can they achieve success and transition their way into business and into life? Your yeah. message to them. Oh, absolutely. I mean, first of all, you got to be dedicated. You got to be dedicated. You got to want it. You got to get up every day with a purpose. You got to know what you want out of life. You have to listen to those who've been in your shoes before. You got to want to achieve greatness and shoot for the stars. That would be my advice. Derek Gathers again right here on another edition of Voice of Reason, the co-organizer of the 31st anniversary of Merle Dobbins. And I must point this out, of course, my friend, I feel like I'm also shaking the hand of Hank Gathers because you have been a legacy as well as your brother. I'm definitely happy again to have you here. He's and it's here. a pleasure. He is always going to be here. here. He's in your spirits, and I take him wherever I go. And we thank again Derek Gathers, one of the co-organizers again of the 31st annual Merle Dobbins event. I'm Jake Schwartz again for another edition of Voice of Reason.
Hello, everybody, for another edition of Voice of Reason. We're, this is Jake Schwartz back here at Merle Dobbins High School. And again, a great ceremony that was uh, just presented, honoring the 1985. That's why we're here tonight, honoring the 1985 team. And look who I found, sophomore <laughs> guard and one of, my, one of my dearest friends who I've always enjoyed speaking with over the years, D.O. Doug Overton. Welcome back to Voice of Reason. Thanks for letting me. It's so good to see you again, as always. And I wanted to take, I want you to, I wanted to, uh, I had my cameraman, Mike Young, <laughs> shoot the uh, actual shots, and I wanted you to take a look at this picture. What does this picture mean to you uh, being a part of this school? I had, I had hair back then. <laughs> <laughs> what did this, uh, what, what did it mean to be a part of this basketball team in 1985? Man, I mean, it's it just, just been like family to me, you know, being, being a part of that great team. Uh, you know, I made the team as a, as a freshman in the ninth grade, so, you know, that kind of just took my basketball career off, I think. Um, when I realized I was good enough to make this type of team in the ninth grade and play varsity and, and go to the championship game and uh, and be around guys like Hank and Bo and Heat and Derek and guys like that, um, you know, just kind of let me know that I was, you know, kind of arriving a little bit on the basketball scene and then, um, you know, just being around those guys every day just 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 made me, uh, you know, realize I had a chance. Yeah, we had you on here during the season, uh, I should say around the fall season at the Narvik Playgrounds. You'll notice I'm wearing the Sixers hat again in Philadelphia because this is, again, the theme to Philadelphia here on Voice of Reason. You have had a lot of great success. After you graduated from Merle Dobbins and are considered one of, if not the greatest guard ever to come out of this school, you teamed up with the legendary Lionel Simmons. And I actually had dinner last night with Joe McGarity, who I know is a good personal friend mm -hmm. of yours, and has always said to me, don't be surprised if your old coach, Speedy Morris, happens to make a, a rare appearance. What was, what was it like playing for two very well-respected coaches? First off, Rich Yankowitz, who was a legendary coach, over 400 wins, and then Speedy Morris, who I know you've had great success. What was that like? Yeah, I mean, no, you said it. I mean, two legendary coaches, uh, Philadelphia legends, both of them. And, and, you know, being able to play for Yank allowed me to, uh, you know, get prepared to play for Speedy. Um, you know, he's a great coach. Uh, Yank really, really worked on the details. We had long practices, and he got after us. He really pushed us to, to, be, to be better players. So when I got to LaSalle, you know, I've been coached before. And, you know, I heard how Speedy Morris was. He, he gets on the guys, but he knows so much about the game. But, you know, both of those guys, I learned a lot, and, and Speedy helped me get ready for the for the next level at, at the pro level. So, you know, I've been fortunate to play with some great coaches in my life, and, and those two guys had a, yeah. had a big part of yeah. it. Yeah, and the Sixers were one of the teams you played for, and the Detroit Pistons. You, know, you went on to have a phenomenal, a marvelous, about 10-plus, I think it was about 13 seasons you mm -hmm. played in the league. And now, uh, as we, we had you on again, as mentioned a few months ago, how are you, are you still currently wor uh, training uh, kids uh, for high school and college players? Are you still yeah. doing your, uh, your program? Yeah, my no opponent of uh, Sports Academy, we, we, we're training kids. Um, you know, we do rare things, you know, basketball camps during the summer, but we also uh, uh, do some sports enrichment programs that we go out to the schools and daycares in the Philadelphia area and try to help teach kids about, you know, just – you know, getting ready for life and, and just trying to support them in that way. So, you know, got a lot of things going on here. I, I, I was going to say, I know you're always, I've, you I, know. I've, as long as I've <laughs> known you, you've always been a very, very active type person. And I want to point this out, Mike, uh, that this man's son was a pain in my behind for four years I had to put up, and his daughter, by the way, I want to point that out, but I, I wanted to throw this out there because I know that you have two incredible children who had great success at their respective schools, your son playing at St. Joe's, for coincidentally, Speedy Morris. Now, what was that feel like? Because I never did get to ask you that question. Your son playing for a guy like Speedy, like father, like son, who do you think he would have of more case on, you or him? Who, who, who <laughs> actually got more embarrassed, I guess you could say, you oh, or man, him? not even close. <laughs> I, caught the brunt, I caught the brunt of it. You know, he was a lot younger back then and, oh, well, and yeah. full of more energy. He, you know, he got on miles a lot, but, you know, he was more laid back in, in, in years uh, at, at the prep. But, you know, you know, it was proud to see him be able to play for a guy like that. If, if there was any coach you wanted him to play for, are you, are you glad it was Speedy? Yeah, absolutely. It, it wasn't even a – I'm sure for you it was a no-brainer. You knew you could afford it. You're saying, now let me think. There's a lot of great schools I could, I could send my boy to. I, I got it. My, my son deserves to play for a guy I started with. He's yeah. the best there. In my opinion, I think when it comes to uh, basketball, with the exception, of course, of Yank, 
he's probably the best there. There's probably not a better coach you know that has more wins and has had more talent than, than a guy like Spieth. Yeah, so no, how no. happy were you to have him send him there for four years and play him with a guy like Steve Estre, who's now over at Notre Dame? Yeah, no, it was great. It was, you know, it was a great experience for him. Um, they had some great teams at the prep. They made it to the Catholic League Championship two years in a row. Um, Should have won at least one of those games, by the way. We all yeah, remember that. Anybody won. who remembers that Catholic League uh, championship game, uh, if, if uh, again, I remember one of the games, I think it was one of your guards, and if I'm correct, I think it was um, Gene Williams. Missed that missing, layup. Yeah. No, he didn't miss the layup. He went one for two from the foul line. Had Gene made those two foul shots, Jaquan Newton's miss goes out, and you win instead of going to overtime. So that was – and then, I, of course, the second year, it, it was certainly all Newman Goretti in Miles' final year. But now I understand he's doing very well, Drexel. He'll be eligible this year under new coach Zach Spiker. Tell us about your daughter. I understand that uh, she had a big accomplishment. I heard it from Joe McGarity, but I think I'd like to let you uh, handle that. Yeah, she did. I mean, she had a great great time at Shipley, too. Uh, her basketball team, she played soccer there. Uh, she was – Voted all school president as well. Um, they won a couple um, state championships. That's right. Yeah. Um, with socks and some great players. There. I was yeah. I was and, there at um, a few of them. Yeah. And, and she's going to Yale next year. She doesn't so, believe that yeah. I can still play basketball. Every time we have a conversation, Miles has, by the way, said the same thing. But now, is she going to try out for the basketball team at Yale? Because I can't picture an Overton that doesn't play basketball. Yeah, we'll picture that one. <laughs> She's not playing basketball. She's not going there to play basketball. She knows she, she's into science and pre-med. And oh, yeah, yeah. So that's what she had. A, had a great conversation again with Derek Gathers of, of the messages he's trying to rely to people. And your message, 31 years later, public and Catholic, certainly not what it was back then when you were playing basketball with Bo Kimball and, and Hank Gathers and Derek. And your message to these kids, what they need to do, uh, I guess, down the road. I mean, I mean, the formula is still the same. You know, you just got to get up every morning and try to get better, and uh, you know, try to stay as humble as you can. And um, you know, and and you know, it's a lot different now. These kids getting a lot more exposure than we got. You know, they get to travel all over the world and all over the country and play. I mean, it was real, just us in the city growing up. We didn't really get a chance to to uh, to go all the places they can. So they getting exposed to a lot more. But you know, I think if you just stick to the fundamentals and try to get better each day and not you know, not think you're better than everybody and you can't listen and learn and then you got a chance. This man deserves to be a college coach, by the way, as well as be maybe an NBA coach. Doug Overton, a pleasure to see you, my friend. You and I, like I said, we go back such a long way since I was nine <laughs> years old. That's Doug Overton again <laughs> with the one and only here on Voice of Reason. Here at Merle. <laughs> Hello, everybody, for another edition of Voice of Reason. This is Jake Schwartz. We're back here at Merle Dobbins on the 31-year anniversary of that 1985 Merle Dobbins team that won the Public League Championship. And uh, with me now, one of my favorite uh, players I enjoyed watching. Uh, actually, I uh, should point out, I was born in 1985, and I always heard the great stories of some of the great Philadelphia players from both public and Catholic. This gentleman here, I think, could really uh, tell us a story that could go on for hours and hours. Gregory Bo Kimball, it is so good to see you, my friend. Welcome to Voice of Reason. And you and I certainly go back from the days as far as basketball terms. Now, we, we actually met in Ambler, uh, which mm -hmm. is actually my hometown, but uh, you, you've had some great uh, runs, and if you don't mind, I want you to take a good look at this guy, because i got to ask, what was that guy like in 1985? Well, um, I love telling the story I grew up about growing up in North Philadelphia, and I grew up at uh, Woodier Playground, 27th and Clearfield, and I always say that the neighborhood created me, and I was so proud of that. All the toughness, all the, uh, the, the competitiveness, the determination, all of that came from, from age 10 to 18. I played against people that was 10 to 15 years older than me. They were faster, stronger, better. And if you spar against that kind of talent every day for eight, for eight years, oh, yeah. you're going to be great. So by the time I got 14, before I came to Dobbins, mentally, emotionally, and on everything that is related to the way that I've progressed, I knew that at age 14, nobody can guard me. I knew I was unstoppable. You really believed that in eighth, are you telling me in eighth grade, you believed you were the greatest player in Philadelphia? I knew I was unstoppable. I didn't say I was the greatest. I just no, knew you couldn't. No, I, I understand. That's, yeah. But I, I was pretty clear about it because I was able to hold my own and dominate people that was, you know, again, faster, stronger, and better. And so by the time I got 18 and went off to uh, USC, 
you know, now I'm playing against people my own age, yeah. and I, I really believe that uh, unconsciously I had a psychological advantage. Well, I, I, I look at you, and I look at the players that you played mm-hmm. in the 80s, in 1985, and I, I certainly think back to this gentleman right next to you, uh, Hank Gathers, who may he rest in peace, and, and by God, was he just, I mean, you couldn't get a better uh, back court or front court partner like him, and then his brother Derek and Doug Overton and Daryl Gates. I mean, th- there really were a lot of special players on that team, and that's how you were able to transition yourself over to both USC and you had great success over at uh, LMU. But I wanted you to talk to us about what it was like playing with a guy like Hank Gathers. What 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 did he bring to to Merrill Dobbins? Well, well, Hank, what I remember, one of the things I remember most about Hank at the Dobbin years is uh, his ju- right before the uh, beginning of his junior year. Uh, sophomore year, he didn't play much. Uh, he did, didn't have great coordination. But that summer before the uh, junior year, he came back as the Hank Gathers that the world got a chance to know. And I was so impressed with that because he was determined. He's dunking on people. I mean, he just was, he became the Hank that the world uh, loved and respect. And... Uh, Hank was also off the court. People talk about it a lot, but Hank was a jokester. I mean, the only time Hank had a serious bone in his body was is when it came to, yeah. came to basketball. Sure. Other than that, he spent 99% of his time talking about everybody that he loved, making everybody <laughs> laugh. I mean, he was a big kid. And, uh, and I was just as fun and crazy as him, but Hank was, just had a, a screw that was loose. That was, Just comedy-wise, he just was the most energetic and fun person you could ever want to be around. So that's what I miss about Hank uh, the most. From a basketball standpoint, uh, the best story I can think of, particularly more college than, uh, than at Dobbins, is against Shaquille O'Neal. Hank knew that every NBA team was represented. They were there to see him play at 6'7 against two seven-footers, Shaquille O'Neal and Stanley Roberts. Yeah, Hank got the course. first seven shots blocked when we played at LSU. It's, and by the way, that's a, that's a, a televised game on ESPN. Yeah, I think I remember. People should go about that game. check it out. But if you want to know what Hank Adler was about as an athlete, he had his first seven shots blocked. He walked off the court with 48 points, 18 rebounds against two seven footers, and we lost that's by three. That's incredible. And that's the best story I think that's I, as I, yeah, Hank I, I, I think we could probably, folks could probably agree that about Hank Gathers going up against that guy they called Shaquille O'Neal. That big seven-foot sensation. Stanley Roberts also had a very uh, nice career in the NBA himself. I think it's safe to say that you had some great success of your own. You were one of the top scorers, not just in the public league. You were among the top players in the country. You played along with Hank for the legendary guru of Go, Mr. Paul Westhead. What was that like, playing for a guy like uh, Westhead? You, it's basically a dream come true. I mean, <laughs> every, I would imagine most athletes would want to wake up and have a coach to tell them, hey, by the way, as a shooter and scorer, every time you touch the ball, shoot the ball. And if you don't, by the way, if you're ever open and don't shoot, you're going to have a seat next to me. That's the green light that he not only gave myself, but he gave to all the other shooters on the team. Now, Again, going back to the psychology of a 14-year-old yes. that's now 18 years yes. old, knowing that I'm unstoppable, playing in that offense was like, a, was, was like a dream. And I didn't want to wake up. And so I knew that, I, I mean, in, a, in that kind of offense, if, if Hank wasn't on the team, I'd have averaged about 50 a game. Did he make you better as a uh, – uh, Paul make you better as a player? He probably, he probably got you more motivated, I think. Well, I think Hank Gathers and I yes. made each other better yes. uh, more than Paul. Uh, Paul just provided the, the offense uh, that allow us to maximize all of our skill sets. And that Hank was unstoppable, Gathers, by Hank the way. Gathers had the green light to grab a rebound and go coast to coast when that wasn't really our, that wasn't really our style. It was really get the rebound, get it to a point guard, because they're going to run it up in four seconds. But Hank had that skill set to be able to take it and go. So he wouldn't, have, he wouldn't have been able to do that in any other office at any other college because you would want to get the ball in the hands of the best ball handler. Hank had ball handling skills and was able to, to do that. So the Loyola Marymount offense is called the system. I actually have a basketball tape out called uh, Life in the Fast Lane, yeah. and it teaches the same offense uh, that we ran in Loyola Marymount. And it's out. Uh, I have copies of myself, but it's with Championship Productions, the same organization that did all the other coaches. You've, you've, I was going to say you've inspired a lot of people like myself. You've inspired Philadelphia kids who are now playing basketball. Tell everybody uh, here at Voice of Reason what's going on with you, where you're living, these days and what you've been up to these days. As I can see, there's a young man, by the way, in the background, happens to be your, uh, uh, how old is this young man? This is your uh, son, 
Uh, and son, Ethan Kimball. Ethan Kimball. Say hello. Who could, very, who could by the way, you could very well be the next... Bo Kimball, by the way, I, I know you're wearing a baseball uniform, but I don't remember a Bo Kimball ever playing for the uh, for the Yankees. Maybe you could be the next one, A Rod or Derek Jeter, possibly. Well, I, you know, I, I understand that completely, though. But uh, I always instill in my kids to uh, I don't push sports of any kind on my kids. Uh, they okay. just happen to love baseball. Well, that's okay. uh, this one says he want to play basketball now. His mom <laughs> just said so. That's great. But um, it's like. The, the advice that I would give the kids is, I lived in the gym. Hank Gathers lived in the gym. And, and Derek uh, lived in the gym, too, his brother. Yeah, Everybody, yeah. it seems like, a To Dobbins be great. The gym. And one, one special thing about our Dobbins team, we went, when we left practice, we all met three times a week, if not more, at Father Dave's house to go to another league game because we played in about two or three leagues. So we knew each other game well, and that's why um, – just, we just was able to just really uh, just play at that level because we had, one, we had a great point guard in Heat. Hank was, you know, primed to the kind of player that he became. And, and Derek defensively and, and offensively, we just had a great team that everyone had great roles, but being able to do multiple, had multiple skill sets. Now, you're still playing basketball to this day. Are you still doing something involving basketball right now? Yeah, I'm a member. I was on the board of directors with the Retired Players Association. Sure. I've been a member yeah. for 18 you years. You played with the Clippers, if I remember, for a few years. I played, yeah, I was a lottery pick for the Clippers in 1990. Right. Played two years there, got traded to the Knicks, mm -hmm. and played uh, seven countries in Europe. Uh, but I've uh, been a member of the Retired Player Association uh, for 18 years, board member for six. Uh, I, uh, we meet twice a year, so it's great to be around oh, guys yeah. like Dr. J oh, and, yeah. and the Ma Magic Johnsons and all. And we meet also every All-Star sure. Weekend is when we do our annual meeting. So I do, uh, I'm a part of the uh, programs uh, with the NBA, the NBA P P uh, Players Association, trying to get guys like myself back in the front office. Uh, rather is coaching development, uh, I mean player development, coaching, uh, general manager. So I'm proud that they selected me to be part of about three programs. Yeah, I'd like to actually start maybe working in the NBA myself. I've been a PA announcer for 10 years. I've been killing myself left and right. Can we maybe talk about that afterwards? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and one of my dreams, believe it or not, and I, 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 I've done myself a disservice, is I really want to be a Division One head coach. And so yes. I, I'm really inspired to do that because I know that what we did at Loyola Marymount, that system, can work. And then the myth is with that offense is that you need a Hank and a bow to run the offense. It's actually the opposite. When you don't have a guys of that skill set, you can really uh, play above your head because the big elephant in the room is the conditioning. All right. And, you know, I, I don't think you could get any better than that. Uh, I certainly am inspired by people like Bo Kibble. Bo Kibble, again, thank you again for coming on. A pleasure to see you as always. And thanks to thank your you. son, Ethan Kibble, as well for coming on. As again, we honor the 1985 Merle Dobbins Championship Public League basketball team. I probably don't think there's a much bigger star with the exception of Hank Gathers than this gentleman right here. This has been a presentation again of Voice of Reason. I'm Jake Schwartz here at Merle Dobbins Senior High School. for Voice of Reason. This is Jake Schwartz. We're back here at Merle Dobbins Senior High School. Welcome to Voice of Reason guard Irv Ezel. It's good to have you on here. Thank you for having me. And thank you for uh, coming on. It's, it's, great to, it's great to have you. It's great to see you here at your old stopping grounds. And by the way, Mike, if you have a quick second, who's this gentleman? That is That's Irv Ezel, me. number four. Number four, Irv Ezel. Uh, it's good to have you on here. Uh, doing a uh, then and now, I guess, with the 1985 uh, basketball team. We just got done hearing the, I guess, uh, the, I guess the, the intros and the, I guess you could say the uh, the testimonials by the entire team. Well, we've heard from the testimonies from the co-organizers, and that's Derek Gathers and Tony Paris. What are your thoughts about tonight? What what has uh, this meant to you? This is an awesome event. It's a long time uh, coming event. Uh, it was such a good. A blessing to be a part of something that made history in our city uh, and you know especially with guys who I grew up with as a kid so you know and this event this event has uh, hopefully opened some doors yeah for uh, opportunity for the kid younger kids that's uh, coming behind us yeah I, I look at uh, you know I look back it's funny because I've been mm -hmm. an announcer as I mentioned to you before we started for the last 10 years I think back to some of the players who are on this team I mean you look mm -hmm. at I mean you just you can't even I can't even get over the fact that you're standing in the presence first of all this man here your uh, coach yeah. Rich Yankowitz yeah, who yeah. I've known I've always known him as the biggest basketball fan yet uh, never yeah. did I realize this is the man who raised you 
He's the man. What, what was he like? What was, what was Rich Yankowitz like as Yank a coach? Yank was a... Because uh, I know that's what you refer to. Yank. What was Yank, Yank like? Yank, he, he was such a good coach, man. And he was so time-oriented. Like, everything was, was written out. Everything was down to the wire. He, he just was on it. He was on his job. You know, we ate from a certain time. We, you know, we, we on the bus two hours. Two, we at the, the opponent's gym. Yeah. Two or two or three hours before. It's just his preparation just was on top. Sure. Oh yeah. So that, that made him different from a lot of coaches in, in our time. And that's what made us successful. You're the fifth best team in the history of Philadelphia basketball. When you think of some of the great players that have graced Merle Dobbins from mm -hmm. Bo Kibble to Hank Gathers to even Derek Gathers mm -hmm. and to Doug Overton, mm -hmm. what was your role? And on that team. Well, I was a sophomore at the time. You were a sophomore with Doug. I was a Doug. sophomore okay. at the time with Doug. And my job, I was the practice point guard. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So I went up against him in practice. So really, you were you like know, the punching bag kind of like uh, exactly. in practice. Because that's what they call those practice point guards. We the were, guys who like to have to get abused by the starting guards. I don't think we won a scrimmage. The whole year. Oh, I would not. I would not. The expect whole that. year. <laughs> but we competed with those guys. We made them better. We made them sharp. Do you feel like that transitioned into the season with those players? Oh, absolutely. Because they demanded us to be good, and we we wanted to beat them. We wanted to say, look, we the new, we the the kids that's coming up. They made so, Dobbins a better school. They made Dobbins. Yeah better for the city of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. When I look back at some of the clips that I got a chance to see earlier mm -hmm. tonight, uh, that team that just, it was almost like watching just what Bo Kimball and Hank Gathers were able to do at Loyola Marymount when they played for a Philadelphia native like Paul West had, the whole oh, yeah. go, go, go type thing, just kind of like the whole, you know, run and gun type back and forth. Was that something that was, uh, I guess, was instrumented at Merle Dobbins? No. No, because it did that, seem that, like this was, team was back and forth. It's just kind of like no, we ran, fast breaks. we ran, but we could play half court too. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, and, oh, and that okay. was a testament to what I spoke earlier in reference to Coach yeah. Yank, how how uh, how scripted he was, and you know implementing plays and things like that. And you know, once we are half court, you got to follow what's going on, or you weren't going to play. Oh, he demanded that, yeah, right? He demanded and he was that. he was that strict of a coach yeah. that if you didn't do his way, yeah. you basically sit on the yeah, bench. Pretty much. Now, you what sit next to me? Oh, I was going <laughs> to say, I don't think we want to sit next <laughs> to Coach Yank. Believe me, if I, I, yeah. I, I'm sure as tough as he was back then, he seems like he's more relaxed now. But uh, yeah. is he? Do you still keep in touch with him? Are you still on the I phone? I do. I do. We we speak it, uh, not not a lot, but you definitely but try to. Speak to him as much as possible. Much as I can. Wanted to talk to you about, because we're doing a, again, this is a, a then and now. Mm -hmm. um, tell everybody again here at Voice of Reason, we like to keep in touch with players, what you're doing these days, where you're living. Okay, well, I'm a, a contractor. I own my own business. I do home renovations. I do kitchens, bathrooms, uh, theater rooms, decks. Anything in the house? If I have any, you know I'm what, your guy. Mike or, or myself, if we have any questions, by the way, if we have any uh, leaks, any problems, I think this is the guy we probably want to talk to. I'm your Urban guy. Urban Double E, I want to point this out, by the way, yeah. if anybody wants to refer to that. And how's that business? Is the business going very well? The business well? is good. We, we're a small company. Uh, myself, Where are you located? I'm located in Defer. I'm, I'm, li I'm living in Defer. My business Defer, New Jersey. Defer, New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah, Defer, and, uh, uh, that's always a really nice, so you're li literally living right over the bridge. I'm living 25 minutes from here. What is it like coming back here 31 years later and seeing a picture like this? I mean, what, what is the first thing it, that's going through your it mind? It gives me a, a sense of pride because we did something that, that too many teams didn't. And, 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 uh, the fifth best team in the yeah. history of Philadelphia. And yeah. you got to remember that when Tony Paris, who's one of the co-organizers, mm -hmm. said that there were... Four teams ahead of you, and I believe two of them, and, and this is two schools, that's Overbrook, mm -hmm. and I want to say the other one, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it was Overbrook High School, and West Philadelphia, I think, was West, the other one. Yeah. Three times, it was Overbrook, 
and one. the other one was the West Philly. In fact, West Philly was the number four team. You then are behind them. Fifth. Now, yeah. what, what does that mean to be of three schools in the top five in Philadelphia basketball history? Pretty hey, exciting. Man, it says it's a pretty lot. exciting, it's though. It's pretty exciting. It says a lot. I mean, we put the work in, and, and we had some great players and on the team. We had a lot team. of great players all the years. And, and, you know, I tell my wife all the time, it was one of, one of the best years of my life. And, you and wish you could that, do that all over again. Man, I was a, a young kid who was on, <laughs> didn't even know what, what was, what was going to happen. And, uh, and I made the team and, yeah, well, and we, uh, yeah. we made history, yeah. man. And I'm just proud of, I'm proud of my teammates. I'm proud of, yeah. to be a Mustang. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's been fun. There's been a lot of great talent over the years from Don Staley as well oh, yeah. on the women's oh, team because yeah. back then even the women's team were doing great. Oh, she was great. And Jarrell Wright, who mm -hmm. had a great four-year career at LaSalle, started right here at, at Merrill Dobbins. What is the message you can get across to the current players who are here at Dobbins now? Because I know this is a brand new type of team. And they're, they're trying to get themselves back on the ground as well. Or they're trying to get themselves off the ground, I should mm -hmm. say. Well, I mean, it starts with the coach. I mean, I don't, I don't know the, the, no, the I understand, president coach I understand, here, I understand but, what you know, you're saying. Advice to, to someone who's trying to tap into what we did is somebody got to be the leader and somebody got to set the bar. And that's what Hank did. He set the bar high. Oh, yeah. And he led. Oh, yeah. And he demanded it. So you either was on board. Uh, he was, he was you, a monster when he played. Oh, he I was, mean, I've watched I videos mean, of him for years. I don't think I could ever see a guy that wanted to win more than he hey, did. And, and Bo hey. actually said to me earlier mm -hmm. that the only way he was serious, because I know he was a bit of a jokester to people yeah. like yourself, oh, yeah. Yeah. the only time he was ever serious was when he was on that court. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, Hank, that, scares, Hank. that scares me a lot. That yeah. probably scared you when you were playing against him in practice. Hank. Well, I knew Hank since we were little kids. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, know, I know him. We were like brothers. Oh, yeah. So we... <laughs> Everybody we, else we scared had, him, I feel like. We had fun. You know, he just demanded a lot, man. He, de he was very demanding. And if you weren't serious and on your game, then you, you won. You played, against, you, won you played against some pretty good players of your day. Oh, Lionel yeah. Simmons. Oh. And, you know, you, you had the privilege of playing Bobby Johnson. And Johnson, and you, all you, them guys. There was a lot of great players. Is the basketball... Are you still following the basketball of the Philadelphia Public League now? Or are you kind of staying away from I kind of stayed away because yeah. I'm so busy. You I, the, I, yeah. You know, I, have, I have also have a cleaning service, too. So I, and you have children. You have, you have a family. Four kids. Wife, you have four kids. Yeah, Where four do you find the time? And two grandkids. Oh, my... God. No, you do not. I don't I have, buy that into any type of way. I have two grandkids. Well, Irvin is well. out. A pleasure to meet pleasure you. A pleasure to Thanks. see you, I should say. This is, again, uh, Double E, Irvin Azell, mm -hmm. one of the many sophomore guards on that 1985 Merle Dobbins team. We'll have, again, hopefully, whenever anybody's watching this, more coverage of that 1985 Merle Dobbins team. I'm Jake Schwartz, again, for Voice of Reason. Thank you. Thank you, Irvin. Thanks, man. Nice talking to you. Hello, everybody, for another edition of Voice of Reason. This is Jake Schwartz here at the 1985 reunion of the Merle Dobbins Mustang basketball team that certainly was the face of Philadelphia. And I wanted to, uh, again, Mike, I wanted to shoot right here at this beautiful thing. Does this look familiar, by the way, to this guest right here? That looks pretty familiar. And, and I think it looks really familiar. He is the head coach and the organizer and constructor of this 85 Public League team, one of my dearest friends in the entire basketball universe, Mr. Rich Yankowitz. Yank, so good to see you again as always, my friend. And you we Thank go you. back, we go back a long way to when I first started actually public address announcing 10 years ago in the Northeast Basketball Tournament. And I always used to see you coming into all the games. You could talk anybody's ear off. And that's mm -hmm. the thing that I've always really respected about you. But what I started to realize this guy is more than just a basketball fan. He's a guy who instructed players. And when I see the players that you've coached over the years, you've won over 400 games, over four decades of experience. What did the 1985 Merle Dobbins team mean to you? Well, I'll tell you this. I mentioned this many times, that the, when you win the first one, it's something that you'll never forget and will last for the rest of your life. And I can still say I'm 73 years old now. And the biggest memory, the greatest memory I ever had was yeah. that 
that 85 championship. Oh, yeah. I will last and you know continue to to move on in my heart and in the hearts of others. It's just a fantastic thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. And, and and I look at these pictures. I, I look at um, there's Bo Kimball, one of the greats ever to grace Philadelphia, and Derek Gathers, Irvin Azell, Randy Slade, and and one of my favorite names again besides Bo was a man who may he rest in peace. The legendary uh, Eric Hank Gathers, what did he mean to you? And what did his brother Derek Gathers mean to you? He was another well, good name. Well, I'll tell you, I, I, I mentioned this. When we lost to Franklin in, the, uh, in their junior year, after the game was over, it was devastating. Things happened that, in that ball game that you can't, can't explain. Just one tough break after the other, that, and it, it finally, we sucked them to defeat. Mm -hmm. But we walked off the floor in, in the locker room, everybody was crying. And Derek came over to me and said, Coach, I could promise you that we're going to win the championship next year. And, and you? And we did. And you did. And we, and we yeah. did. You did. You, know? you had some great underclassmen as well, and Doug Overton and uh, Double E, who I had earlier on tonight, Irvin right. Azell, and, and they certainly proved. In fact, Irvin mentioned something to me that you used him as a, like a, not a punching bag, but you used him as one of those practice type guards so that you could actually make that first team better. Did that yeah. work? What, 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 absolutely. What happened is, usually most teams, you have a, you have maybe five, six, maybe if you're lucky, seven players that are top quality. And then the rest of your bench, uh, you just hope they develop. But what happened, you got to remember, these guys faced a publicly championship team every day in practice. They were, they were pushed to the limit every day. At the beginning, it, like we, we would go through drills and, and, and running uh, and, and you, know, off, you know, defense, a lot of time on defense and offense. And then we put it together with a scrimmage at the end of, at the end of practice. And these guys were going against, you know, that 1985 championship team, basically, every day. And, and they, they got killed every day in practice for like the first three or four weeks. It really helped then, them out. Right, then, it? then as the season went on, they got a little closer. And then when it got to the end of the season, toward the end of the season, they were right with them. And, and you know, Hank, as ferocious as he is, he'd start getting mad. He'd be banging up on Jeff Hamilton. And uh, Jeff Goldwire would be, the, uh, would be the, the guy that would stand in yeah. between them. But the practices really got fierce, you know, going into February. Like I said, in December and January, they, they, they got killed in practice every day in the scrimmages. But I always kept them together. I didn't believe in putting, you know, two starters and three subs on one team and I wanted those starters to stay together, you know, every day. And as the season progressed, the, the fellows on the bench, the Irvs, the Randy Slades and Michael Wells's and Jeff Goldwire and uh, you know, they just Juan Edney, they just got better and better and, and pushed them. And that that's what that's what brought them to that level. Yeah. That they were able to, you know, win 28 games that year. Yeah, 28 and two, if I'm correct about right. that, undefeated in the public league. And you faced some very good competition yes. from Bobby Johnson, Lionel Simmons at Southern, and you're again, as mentioned, one of five, well, three, because three of those teams mm -hmm. were Overbrook were the top five all-time teams. Mm -hmm. You rank along with even the West Philadelphia teams. Mm -hmm. Was there any good competition you went up against in 1985? Oh, my God. Besides it, it, the L we, trade. We, we, we weren't even th thought of to be the public league champions that year. People were, were pinning, you know, Franklin and then right behind them, I guess Franklin and us, and then Gretz. And Southern wasn't even, you know, in, in the mix. It was, it was Franklin, Dobbins, and Gratz were the top three. They had Brian Shorter, mm -hmm. and they were, you know, they were there. They were outstanding. It was a good so, time to be a public league uh, uh, fan, there, there wasn't was, it? There, there, and Frankfurt was good that year. West Philly was still, you know, still good. They were always good. There was a, so it really there was. There was a, there, there, was, yeah. there was like eight, eight, seven, eight teams that were. And we did. And, and, and back then, as opposed to when me being the an announcer now in the last ten years, because you have those more teams and you have all these like from A to like D and divisions. Because right. back then you didn't have those types of brackets or not yeah. brackets, but I mean like divisions. Right. So it really was a different time. It seems like yeah. for Philadelphia Public League basketball. One thing we definitely do talk about if we're going to shift gears again, we want to talk to you about uh, what's been going on 
with Rich Yankowitz, what you're doing these days. I know you're still coaching. You're coaching right. baseball. You, you were actually one of the many people. This guy was one of the many people that has actually coached multiple sports. Now, what, 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 where are you coaching, or what are you coaching now? Well, I'm coaching baseball. I, I, this is all volunteer, you know, assistant of coaching. I'm coaching a game with my buddy Art, Art Kratchman, mm -hmm. who in the 83, 84, 85, believe it or not, was helping me out at Dobbins. Mm -hmm. he, he was just out of college. And I think he, had, he was ready to, to, to get a coaching career started at Devon Prep. And he wanted to have some experience, and he asked me if, I could, if he could come here and help out. And he, he was one, one of like a, you know, like a volunteer coach like I am with him now. Um, at Dobbins. So he was with Hank and Bo and, and Heat and all of them during those years, mm -hmm. the, the, during their junior and senior year he was here. Uh, but I'm coaching at baseball at Gamp with, with Art and, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm coaching basketball at Engineering and Science with uh, Charlie Brown. And, uh, and I'm playing baseball, still playing. It's the, amazing. You're at, at yeah, 73. Well, it's... well, they have, they have um, <laughs> I play on a 55 and over team. A 60 and over team, oh, and a 65 and over team. Oh, three, boy. Three That's, teams. So um, I ask this as well for all the players, and I'll ask this for you. The transition from 31 years ago to now, your message to children, what do these public league, Catholic league, and Philly kids need to do if they want to go on to have a great life? What must they do? What is your message? Well, well the number one is that they have to get an education. Everybody talks about it, and it goes in one ear and out the other. But in order to be successful, because life doesn't end in basketball, and they, they have to do well in the classroom. And also, on, on the basketball standpoint, they have to learn fundamentals. Fundamentally, you know, I noticed that, that players at ENS, uh, where Charlie Brown's an excellent coach in teaching fundamentals, these kids don't have the skills nowhere near that they had, you know, 30 years ago. They, 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 they play games, you know, they play AU ball, but they're not coached, they just play games. They, they play on a Friday night, they lose, the next day they have another game, but nobody teaches them actual skills. These kids need more skills in order to develop. It's just not a dunking game, behind the back game, um, behind the back dribble, pass game. It, it, it's not a flare game. The game just happens to be exciting but it's fundamentals that they need. So the two things that I, I look at is getting that education because you've got to have something mm -hmm. to fall back oh, yeah. on. And they just need better skill work. Uh, and I see it, I see the teams that we play in the public league and I see uh, you know, what happens at, at engineering and science now and at Dobbins and all the other high schools in the city. Kids are not as fundamentally sound as they were back then. Oh yeah. Four decades and still going on strong, although I think it's a lot longer than that. Rich Yankowicz, thank you so much for being here. A pleasure to see you, you as too. always, my friend. You yeah. know that I have such a great amount of respect for you, and we have such a great history together. Rich Yankowitz again here on another edition of Voice of Reason. This is the man who made the Merle Dobbins 85 championship basketball team all possible. I'm Jake Schwartz again for Voice of Reason. Schwartz, we're back here at... Merle Dobbins High School, and it is home of the 1985 Philadelphia Public League champions, and that's why we're here again as mentioned tonight, as our time has come and gone, the 31st year anniversary of that 85 basketball team that went 28-2 and undefeated en route to the first ever Philadelphia Public League championship. I want to thank again our co-host, Tony Paris, and a teammate of that 1985 Merle Dobbins team, Mr. Derek Gathers. Certainly want to pay our tributes to all those who could not be there tonight, including Derek's wonderful brother and the legendary Hank Gathers. Rest in peace to you, my friend. And because of people like you, this is why we have a great basketball team. I want to thank our guests from Irvin Azell to Doug Overton, to Tony Paris and Derek Gathers, a legendary Bo Kimball. We also want to thank, again, the legendary Rich Yankowitz for stopping by as well. And I want to thank all of you, the people, for listening to another edition of Voice of Reason's coverage of the 1985 Merle Dobbins basketball team. I'm Jake Schwartz. We'll see you at the games. Hi. Um, 
for all the people who got Laura Gwen Elementary who said wouldn't be on TV. I'm on TV. Hi. <laughs>